This is lecture number 10, um, basically measuring facial aesthetics. Um, I've already discussed what we think makes a face look better, or perhaps not so good. But of course, when uh, treating a patient, certainly when initially doing a consultation, one needs to be able to assess this in a fairly specific way. Now, um, people have been trying to do this for a long time. In the last century, they used to measure the shape of the face and relate it to various characteristics. But um, I think we've advanced from that. But I do remember Robert Ricketts, for whom I had great respect, um, thought that it was related to the divine proportion. Um, I could never really understand this. You know that the shape of a bit of paper is related to the divine proportion. It comes to about 1.6 and a bit. But anyway, I found that yes, it often fits attractive faces, but it can often be made to fit unattractive faces. Therefore, I don't give it a lot of weight. Um, Robert um, Ricketts used the um, aesthetic line, which comes down like this, measures the relative position of the tongue, lips and nose. But I don't think that's very satisfactory either, because the chin can be either taken forward or may drop back, and that renders this particular measure less valuable, I think. I prefer the cheek line, which is a very simple line. You just take it from the centre of the lower eyelid and drop it vertically here, touching the cheek. And I think there's a picture there that you can see this line. Ideally, it should run level with the nose, um, but it can either be 15 degrees more than that or 30 degrees more than that, occasionally even more. And you can see typical facial changes that occur when you do that. Um, I was interested in the ability of the human eye to be able to visualize minute changes. For instance, the nasolabial angle, which a lot of orthodontists use, you can assess within a degree or two just by looking at the side of a face. And I have found when uh, comparing identical twins, I look at them for a long time and find I can't see really any difference at all. And in the end, I say, well, I think that one looks faintly better. But what is remarkable is I then get a, another six or seven judges, and they all come to the same conclusion, although there is hardly any difference between the two twins. Um, I discussed before about beauty being in the eye of the beholder, and there's no doubt that that is true. But you'll find that some racial differences do make a difference. Now, in the Far East, many people have very large zygomas, and this does give them a very attractive look. However, it only looks attractive, I find, if the maxilla is also wide and well placed forward. And uh, a good zygoma with flat maxilla is not really attractive at all. 